Hello, my friends, and welcome back to our continued buying Let's Play Ace Attorney Dual Destinies for the PS5. My name is the Fightless Bird. This is your Sorbius Game Channel, and today we complete Turnabout Academy, the third case in the game, I guess. I mean, it's kind of weird because the number says, but you know what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead. Let's not waste any time. Let's dive back into this and defeat the ends, justifying the means. At least just means. I mean, one of the two. I hope you're all having a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day today. Athena Sykes is right, psyched and ready to rock. Prepare for your utter defeat. Oh, we're in the Tainamon. Ooh, I really was really close to the end. I didn't realize how close I was to the end. If only I had just gone one more scene. But then again, eh, it's okay. Professor Court wasn't killed in the atrium. She was killed right where her body was found. We know because there wasn't any time to move the body there from anywhere else or somewhere else. That means the body had to have been hidden somewhere on stage until it was found. Let's think along those lines and see where it takes us. First up, when did Professor Means remove the body from its hiding place? Well, let's see. What was he doing right before the body was discovered? He was using this bit of time his fake alibi created to move the body to where it should be more easily spotted. Therefore, the only time Professor Means could remove the body from its hiding place is... Uh, it's before the mock trial because the speech happened before the trial. Before the mock trial? No, that can't be it. Hugh testified that he saw the body before the mock trial. But it turned out he was lying to protect Junie. The appearance of the body has to coincide with the time covered by the professor's alibi. When, when did he give the speech? I don't really recall when he gave the speech. Uh, uh, he, uh, there's no way he gave the speech during the trial, right? After the mock trial, oh, that's not it either. I saw the mock trial before it ended. This, the when and why Professor Means fabricated his other by his key here. All right, well, I'm also a rock star, a rough start, but it's okay. We'll, we'll get there. Don't worry. The body was moved during the mock trial. It was during the mock trial specifically. Uh, during this speech, Professor Means with the body to an easily seen location during his long pre recorded speech. So that's at 10 minutes and 35 seconds. How do I remember that? I can't remember when he gave the uh, speech. The professor also moved something to the stage that wasn't there before specifically. He didn't move the body. It was the white statue? Yes, Lady Justice. During the mock trial, Professor Means wrapped the white ju Lady Justice in this gold banner and sent it zipping down the stage with the crash, killing two birds with one stone. He drew attention to the body and made it look like the murder occurred in the art room. But there was, was there a somewhere to hide a body on that stage? It doesn't seem likely. No, there had to be some place. All the dots. Wait a second. How about something that should have been finished but was only mostly done? Something was used to cover the body up. But it did draw undue attention because it looked like it belonged there on stage. And that way, no one would suspect that there was a body hidden inside. Who was already on the stage of people concealing the body? It's not the school banner. So it's either got to be the Wright statue or the Gavin statue. Wasn't the Wright statue destroyed though? I'm trying to remember locations. The the Gavin statue I think was on the right, and the Wright statue was on the left. Oh. Never mind. The Gavin statue is on the left and it's complete. The right statue is on the right, but it's not complete. Therefore, it has to be the right statue. Alright. Alright, good, good, good. 
coming back. The body was hidden by Wright's statue, but where? Oh, I know, the Mr. Wright's statue that was never actually finished. The body was wrapped under some cloth to hide what was really inside. Cleverly disguising it as a boss's statue. Oh, okay. That's really devious. Well, look at that statue. Mr. Newman gave up on the right statue, yet Professor Means finished it in a single night. Yes, what an impressive feat that was. Objection! Not so fast. No, his so-called work of art deserves none of his praise. That's because it was only a facade to hide his real work. The murder of Professor Quart. Come again? Afraid I don't follow. He hid the body by making it look like the statue of Mr. Wright. With the body wrapped under a piece of cloth, it looked like a statue. What? I second that what? Huh. Now this is getting interesting. No, I'm not surprised at all. I knew this all along because I am a genius. I'm very surprised. No, no! Why is it getting preposterous? How would such a thing even be possible? Objection. Nobody but nobody speaks but me. I, I didn't even know this is, but Enter Zero pointed this out in the um, in the comments in the last video. But apparently there were a bunch of things behind him that I completely totally missed, such as no pets allowed in court. I said no pets allowed. What's wrong with a not guilty verdict? Everyone fails except me. Nobody may speak but me. The bright, cheery, dark age of the law where the end justifies the means. How did I miss all that? I have no idea, but I caught that one. We'll never know until we try. Uh-oh, I think I know where this is going. Okay, Apollo, time to turn me into a reasonable likeness of Mr. Wright. Uh... <laughs> I got back the power out. He's like, I'm not amused. I'm going to pose like the statue, like so. And now I want you to wrap me up in a cloth so I look like a statue. Um, I hate to ask the obvious, but where am I supposed to get this magical cloth? We're gonna use the constellation cloak? I'm afraid this isn't the right color, Mr. Justice. Well, given how this sudden the request was, it's kind of the best I could do, Your Honor. All right, I think that about does it. <laughs> well, what do you think, everyone? Do I look like a statue of Mr. Wright or what? But how do you get it to stand? Oh, you get it to stand up because if you look at the picture, there's like a framework behind it. So you just put her arm where the frame is and it looks like she's pointing. Well, it looks like some random person to me. What, the statue's a pair of busts? Phoenix Wright has that spiky hair on the back of his head. Look at the hair. The statue's head is way bigger than the average person's anyway. You gotta hand it to me for trying, anyway. Wait, that's it. The hands. Um, her arms are raised over her head, and there are dark bruises around her wrist. Yeah, the professor was probably tied up with something. The marks on her wrist indicated she'd been tied up. Apollo, tie me up in a new pose. Wait, you're not into this kind of thing, are you? <laughs> Wait, what? No! Besides, this was your idea! Just tell me how to tie your hands already. Professor Quartz's wrists were tied together, and I couldn't help but think that's related. How should I arrange myself to match the shape I want, given her hands were tied? Based on the picture... Which I can't see anymore. Thanks a lot, game. But based on the picture, her hands were up, basically over her head. So it has to be from behind my head. Apollo, tie both my hands behind my head. See, this makes it possible to fake the spikes on the back of Mr. Wright's head. Oh, wow. Sure, but then what about the statue's arm? With both my arms behind your head, you can't exactly complete the pose. But there's that wooden thing. Yeah, it would be awfully hard to make this the objection pose like this. 
Hmm, I can't help but thinking you've forgotten something, Athena. Something on the body that you don't have right now. What did the victor's body have that I don't? The arrow? Because the arrow that pierced the victim's side. That was on the body. Nothing else was on the body. Like, this is all stuff that's apart from the body. Yeah, well... I mean, did she have the planner on her? Really, these are the only two things that I can think of that were actually on the body. However, the arrow could give a point. Whereas, this isn't really much of a point. Let's go with the arrow. Oh, right. There was an arrow sticking out of his side. Okay, Apollo. Take that and pledge it into my side. What are you, crazy? I just like how Black Bolt doesn't respond at all. He's just like, okay, this is amusing. This is entertaining. Or it's ridiculous and I want to be out of here as quick as possible. <laughs> Fine. Then go get some duct tape. Rapido. Snell. All right. All right. I don't need to know other languages to know bossy when I hear it. The fatal arrow to the side. Spiky arrow created from two hands. That is super clever. A masterpiece in the making. Now cut me with the cloth. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. But remember to make the arrow stand out, okay? That is really clever. Mommy, the arm's too short. Shh, remember your indoor device, dear. Nobody's buying it. The arrow is nowhere near long enough. But, but, but. What else could he use for the arm? Huh, <laughs> still won't get up, eh? I must command you. Fully by spirit and determination. Ha <laughs> ha. Well, of course you're not giving up. I had to all she's put me through. She owes me an explanation. And then one that makes sense. Now, disappoint me again, the penalty will be doubly painful. Gex, I guess I bet it might this time. I only have one HP, so it really doesn't matter to me much. Think, Athena, think. Professor Court was murdered. When she stopped by the stage, to see Professor Means. Okay. If it wasn't premeditated, he must have used something close at hand in his little ruse. Apollo, show me those stage set up photos again. Uh, like what? Right now? Okay, hold on. Please, please, please. Please be in this photo. It just has to be. What are we looking at? Like, what are we actually looking at in this photo? I mean, he's got his globe thingy. The arm on the right, on the Mr. White statue is really this right here. What are we looking at? I mean, it could be his staff thingy. But he has it on him. But he could have always taken it down later. I mean, this is the only object that's like pointy. The stepladder, it wouldn't work. Nothing on Robin. Or Hugh. Still can't believe that's Hugh. Nice job, game. Um, it, and, and, and it doesn't have the top here. Like, if I could go to the top of this, I would think it's the thing pointing out. But it's not in the picture. Therefore, the only pointy thing in this picture is his uh, staff or distaff or whatever you call it. That's the only thing that has a point to it. Got it. I know what he used for the arm on the statue of Mr. Wright. Well, this is absurd. I ain't noticed this thing in this photo. <laughs> Don't play dumb with me, Professor. It's the staff you have right here. Everyone fails except me. Ziff! This is beer of a great legal warrior! Whatever. Just hurry up and lend it to me. The length is perfect. 
Mr. White, would it object to such an awesome arm? Yeah, he is really objecting, isn't he? Okay, go for it, Apollo. Sure, I'll give your arm a uh, hand, I guess? Cloth and binding coming right up. Wow, look at that point. Oh, the dots. Nah. Wow, that's, that's impressive pointing this. Ha, ha, ha. It's Phoenix Wright. Look, it's that famous lawyer. Well, that's definitely him. I know that bow's anywhere. We did it. Did it? We? <laughs> well, am I not the spinning image of the legendary Phoenix Wright? The man who will bring us out of these dark ages and into an era of Billy Golden Light. Golden Light. All I see before me is a pink specter of a man. <laughs> That's just because Mr. Wright likes a statue. He's possibly tickled pink. Get it, Apollo? He's tickled pink! Blah. Oh, God, that joke deserves a pink slip. <laughs> hmm. Seems the uh, gallery is quite impressed with the fence sharp thinking. We're in the witness. Bah! The resemblance to nothing more than a coincidence! Not so fast there, Buster. Unfortunately for you, I can prove my theory to be more than a mere coincidence. To prove that his spear was thrust into the victim, all I had to do is... I didn't realize that was a spear. That's how it was sticking out. I didn't even realize that until just now. Wow, Flightless, you're slow. Uh, test for blood. Because if it was thrust into him, it would have some residual trace. All you need is a good ball of luminol for that, right? That doesn't make any sense at all. That doesn't... Well, that makes... Eh, no, that doesn't make any sense at all because he's been touching the entire time. So the fact that he has it on him, of course it would have his prints. This is the only one that makes sense. We had assumed the victim's jacket wound came from the arrow being forcibly shut in. But if the wound was from the spear instead, then we should be able to detect traces of the victim's blood on it. Your Honor, it may be as if you will! By any means possible! What if I get rid of my spear? Wait, what if I burn it? What's wrong with a non guilty verdict? If I do that, I'll be found innocent! Yes, I'm innocent, I tell you! Objection. Huh, surely you don't expect us to take lectures from you now. Now, I ask you in the gallery. Help me decide the professor's fate. <laughs> we take part. <laughs> This <laughs> is such a great breakdown. Prosecutor Blackwell, what has become of our witness here is total means? It is, as Sexton suspected. Blood was detected on this staff. He has admitted to this heinous crime. All of it. Yes! Victory! He shall join us in the clink tomorrow. His teaching skills can be put to good use there. Really? Do we want this guy teaching, like, anyone? I mean, even if it's, um... Even if it's criminals, I don't think I want anyone to, like, 
go under his wing. Great, he'll teach felons that the end justifies the means. So much for rehabilitation, exactly. Can I ask what the professor's motive was? Take over the school with his uh, philosophy. Huh. I can barely make out a word he said on account of his shattered teeth. One of Blackwell's fellow inmates was once a surgeon. Why not a former dentist too? I eventually had him put pen to paper. It turns out Professor Means was the one taking bribes. The victim had suspected him at a report from the class snitch. That led her to question him at length the day of the killing, right there on that stage. The result, the heinous crime that was brought before this court. The fool, like Newman, had come to know the script contents via the victim's note. It seems he came up with a plan to sell the victim with their own all in order to... Make the killing look like the one in the script, and thus frame the defendant. Very clever. I'm glad we finally got to know what the purpose of the arrow was. I mean, the arrow was not just a red herring because Hugh was in the archery club. The arrow had importance. But the scrap of paper with Hugh's name had the same mark as Professor Court's planner. Yes, about that. Those planners are bestowed upon all students graduating at the top of their class. Really? So then? Indeed. Once upon a time, Professor Means was also awarded the same notebook. The handwriting is being analyzed now, but like as not, the scrap belonged to him. Really? This too was evidence of the bribery scheme the victim had obtained. No, that constant court was clean and at only Aristotle Means took the bribes. How about that? Hmm, I think a professor would murder a colleague then try to pin it on a student. If this is the dark age of the law, then we can only hope that a brighter future awaits. And the first step is to hand out my verdict for a promising young lady who's probably not going to be a lawyer after this, but whatever. Court finds the defendant Juniper Woods. <sighs> not guilty. You're free, Juni. <laughs> it just doesn't care. <laughs> I wish you all the best and you want to become a courtroom judge. Where all this confetti come from? Oh, we have someone clean all this up. We don't need young people like you. And we ever hope to restore the law to its former glory. Yes, Your Honor. I'll work as hard as I can. Maybe one day I'll be able to work with all of you to make a difference. Proudly, sir, Professor Court's memory. Do not let her death be in vain. Do not give up the law to go just randomly raise a garden. Wait, did she actually ever give up being, um, pursuing a career in the law? Or was she just at the courthouse that day in a garden outfit? That's the last thing I expected to hear from him today. Who is adjourned? October 26th, Defendant Court lo Defendant Lobby Number 3. Thank you, Dina. I really mean it. <laughs> it was nothing, really. I could take the biggest single mess of a case and unravel it just like that. I do you know. You look pretty wild well up there at the end. Literally and figuratively. Yeah, what was going on with her there? You look pretty hungry for a knuckle sandwich, Buster. <laughs> I, I want to thank you too, Apollo. Ha ha ha, don't mention it. The way you were always there for Dina when she was in a bind? And at the detention center? Where your smile gave me hope when there was none? It was like the warm rays of the sun shining down on peaceful woodlands. I love you so much. Uh, um, mm -mm, I mean, um, I, 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 I think you're an absolutely amazing person, is what I meant to say. Ah, thanks, Jitterbur. That means a lot to me. But I still have a lot of work to do. And I can't wait until we see you on the judge's bench. Ha ha ha. I promise you I'll get there someday. That's why, until that day, I'll... I'll... Hey, 
is Trucy. Guys, I've got some big news. I mean, this is huge. Oh, am I interrupting something? No, no, it's okay, I think. So what's the big news? The school festival. So it's time to kiss up to what happened, but... We just got a call. In memory of Professor Constance Court, who worked so hard to make it happen. The festival has been extended one extra day until tomorrow. Really? All right! We've got a special treat for all of you. A love letter for Themis Legal Academy. Achtung, baby. It's time for the guitar serenade. Oh, I want to hear the song. Even if we've already heard it many times, I don't care. I, I want to hear the song. The, the song. <laughs> October 27th, Team Missing Gold Academy, third floor lecture hall. Wow, that was so much fun. School festivals are amazing. Tee I think you and Robin are getting a little carried away. Ah, you singing voice, Juniper? It could melt my heart. I want to hear her sing. Mr. Uh, Wright, thank you for that training seminar. Ah, ha, ha. Just remember, the objection pose is all about attitude. Oh, and congrats on your mock trial win. Although Robin had you for a while there. I did, didn't I? But I'm just glad we're back to how we used to be, thanks to Athena. And you know what? I think I'll stick with becoming a prosecutor after all. I'm going to make up for my mock trial loss by winning the real deals in court. Mock trial loss? What loss? Wait, did they reprise the trial and here won? <laughs> Level-headed lawyer, genius, quest genius, and hot-blooded prosecutor, quest student. We'll go head to head in a mock child battle for the Sheep Devil's Black Hut. So, does this mean it's really gonna happen? Hmm. J -j Juniper. There is something that I've been wanting to say to you. Huh? Oh! Is he gonna do what I think he is? Juniper. Uh, can we still be friends? You know, best friends, like we've always been. Huh? Best friends? Q, would you go to profess your undying love for Juniper if you won your mock trial? No, I was going to confess. That I'm not a genius. And that I'm not really, and that I'm really 25 years old. But you already dragged it out to me during the trial. Whoops! Listen, Hugh. You too, Robin. Miriam? Ah, Miriam's here too. How about that? Uh, me too? Miriam's got this tactical espionage action stuffed down to a science. I've been thinking it's up to us to put an end to the Dark Age of Law if we can. Let's all work together to usher in a new age where winning only results from the truth. And the end never justifies the means. Count me in. Uh, yes, I wouldn't have it any other way. I, I take that as a yes. Best friends forever, huh? No matter what anyone says, nothing beats true friendship. You bet. And what about your BFF, Apollo? Aren't you a bit old for using that word? Yeah, he's the best friend a guy could have. Which reminds me. We're supposed to meet up and gossip about the new girl in the office. Hey, no talking about me behind my back. So, what kind of guy is he anyway? Well, I had to describe him in one word. And so, after some slight arm twisting, Apollo promised to bring me to beat his defense. 
Unfortunately, that promise was never meant to be fulfilled. Wait, what? For not long after, the friendship was mercilessly severed by fate. What? And the bonds between us began to fray and unravel as well. Sorry, but I'll be taking a leave of absence. So, Paulo. Even now, those words continue to ring in my ears. The discord in our ever-cheerful Apollo's voice made him sound so cold and distant. Why, Apollo? Why? Why would you leave us all behind? The end. All right. Well. That did take over a half hour, so probably a good thing we did that. Turn about Academy. All right, let's uh, let's get some music playing. I, I like this uh. I, I like this picture here. It's a cool picture. Anyway, about the case. So what do I think? I think that this case was pretty darn good. I I, I do think there's problems with this case. Like, if anyone had just been honest, I felt like this case wouldn't have been much of a case. Uh, everyone's trying to defend each other. They all have discord in their hearts. There's, there's tension between the three best friends. And it all just felt... It all just felt unneedably forced. I, I like how they're able to come back together at the end. But... I don't really get the, the the massive discord between them and this case probably could have been solved a lot earlier than it did. I don't think it's as bad as the, uh, the AAI case which dragged on forever with the haunted house and all that. But there are times when I was wondering about this case like you know, why do we do all of this? However, I will say, unlike the haunted house thing, because there was that, there was that tension, it really made it seem like you didn't know who was the killer. And while I suspect it means at the beginning, there's a lot of problems with why means would have us be hired. And because of that, you know, you just kind of forget that, that that he did it. And instead you focus on Robin and Hugh. And the idea of them both possibly being the killer, that works for me. I didn't like how long it took to get us there. But I do like that that constant who done it type feel. Especially since we just had a couple of cases where we knew who the killer was right at the get-go. And if we knew who the killer was right at the beginning, it, it kind of took away from the mystery of the case, which which, which is kind of sad. Uh, one other thing I don't like about this case is I don't like the fact that once again we have a returning person as the suspected killer. I just think that's not as interesting. Um, when they did it with Gumshoe's girl, Bird. I think her name was Bird, right? Bird, yeah. When when they when the game did it with Bird, I was annoyed by that because she just kept constantly appearing. I, I don't like to see a a person get tried for a murder multiple times in the same game. It just I think that takes away some of the, uh... I mean, one of the things I love about Ace Attorney is the characters. All the characters in this game are always interesting, or usually always interesting. Well, they always have, like, a quirk about them that makes them pretty interesting. And when you have the same character reused, it, it, it's, it, it just, it kind of takes some of that thunder away. And what's worse, probably the biggest sin that this case had was you never doubted that your person didn't do it 
Now, I know in Ace Attorney games, for the most part, it's very rare to have it where the person you're defending is the actual killer. But there's still got to be a mystery. Like, well, maybe she could have done it. But there was never a mystery because the first case in the game, Athena is... I'm sorry, not Athena. Junie is suspected of being the murderer. So the fact that we knew Juniper could not have been guilty because in the future she wasn't in jail takes away a little bit from this case overall. But I still enjoy this case. Uh, there, there hasn't been a bad case yet in Ace Attorney. There's been some cases where I'll quibble quabble over how the case was run. Uh, and there's some cases that I think are just forgetful. They're not bad. They're just not, they're just kind of meh. Um, I don't think this case is kind of meh. But I don't think this case is a top tier case. And the reason is uh, for all the reasons I just said. But what makes this case really, really good is Robin and Hugh. Uh, both of them have mysteries attached. And Robin, probably the biggest mystery attached. Uh, Aristotle Means was really, really cool. Uh, his whole chalkboard thing writing things in the background in his breakdown which is amazing that guy is incredible uh, i like how there's even though the game didn't say it i guess it's assumed the game never said that he did it because he wanted to take control of the philosophical element of the school but i think it's assumed that's what he was trying to do it's assumed that he wanted to be the uh the the only professor there to dominate his students with his philosophy and, and i i don't i don't think anyone can convince me otherwise i i believe that's what's really happening here and you just kind of have to be led to that conclusion I, I like dina having her first case be a rocky road i like also how there is this mystery that they set up for future cases I don't know if we'll see it in case four or case five, but there's this mystery involved or is some sort of traumatic incident in her past because it looked like a young Athena Sykes in that flashback that she had where there was blood over her. And what kind of trauma did she see? What kind of trauma did she experience? I'm more interested in that than Apollo's quest to figure out to, to, to take the leave of absence. I, I, I'm, I'm, I don't, it's not that I don't like Apollo. It's just, there hasn't been enough yet from Apollo to make me go, okay, why is he leaving? He just decides to leave and you're like, so, and like, but why? But with her, you actually see something and you're like, oh, something bad happened to her. What was this bad thing that happened to her? And also, Apollo had this entire journey in the previous game. So if this, if the previous game was all about Apollo's journey, I think that this game is all about Athena's journey. But at the same time, I can't but wonder, why do the side plot with Apollo? I mean, I can't, I, I can't say it's if it's a good thing or a bad thing just now because there's still more cases to go. But it is one of those things where I, I feel like the game is, you know, really encouraged me to keep playing to find out these answers. But it, it's almost like, it's almost like if you watch a movie or a TV show like Game of Thrones, for example, you watch Game of Thrones and the first thing that you see in that TV show are the White Walkers like killing a bunch of people and being this looming threat. And then you had to wait, I don't know, five, eight seasons for them to actually be a threat. It, you telegraphed your move too early without enough stuff happening to keep me engaged that these guys are the big bad. And with Apollo saying, you know, I'm going off on my own, uh, we've been stuck in the past for the past two episodes so it doesn't hit the same way now if apollo had said that at the end of 
this episode, or if case one was case three, if this was more of a chronological order thing, I think that would have been better. Correction. I know it would have been better. I, I firmly believe if case one would have been case three, this game would have been better. Because A, uh, Juniper would have been a returning character who gets caught up in another murder mystery. But we wouldn't know if she did or not because, you know, it's the present day. So, who knows? Ah, ah, ah. But that would make case two, case one, one and eight. Is case two really a good case one? I don't know. I, I don't know. Well, let me know what your thoughts are in the, the comment section below. Do you think the sequence of how this game tells stories is a good sequence? Because I'm unsure. I, I am really, really unsure if if I like the sequence events. Like, make this make the DLC case three. Make case three case one. So basically, the way it goes is three, one, two, special episode. And then I assume four and five is set in the present um, or the future. I hope so, because I'm getting tired of sticking in the past. I want to see what is happening in the present, okay? That's what I want to see. But anyway, uh, I've been rambling. I, I ramble sometimes. It's just what I do. I, I love you all so very much. Thank you for everything. I hope you guys have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day. And until next time, so long and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter and you are brilliant and you are loved and you should always be true to yourself Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.